All right, everyone, it's time for occult literature, video number 138, an alchemical catechism of Paracelsus, of course. Uh, it seems like just yesterday I made an occult literature video. Oh, wait, I did, and I was almost done with this one anyway, so I just sort of hammered it out and uploaded it last night, too. Uh, so it was done this morning, so great times uh, for February, already three texts. Um, link in the description, of course, where you can get my edition of this work off Amazon. Second and third links are to my books and blogs. If you like alchemy, I've got a whole bunch of them. I think I've got almost 30 texts specifically just about alchemy, and there are alchemical inclusions in some of the academic works as well. I've got, I've got a whole alchemy category there for a reason. It's a, a large number of works. Uh, this is a fairly short, it's only 32 page text as such. It's obviously uh, less expensive than something full length. Um, but it does one of the better jobs that I've actually seen. This, this was interesting. I, you know, going in dry and not knowing, knowing anything about the manuscript, usually I assume that these little, uh, you know, alchemical things from the 16th, 17th, 18th centuries, usually they're not very illuminating. They're rather opaque. It's a lot of hidden meanings and symbology. I was surprised, therefore, when I went through it and I actually realized, oh, this is actually sort of an explanatory track that takes that symbolism and lays it bare. In that sense, it uh, specifically, as well, admonishes the reader that they should read other works, including the Turba Philosophorum, which is, you know, one of the more well-regarded works uh, sort of, of, of occultism. Uh, more clear, a little bit less opaque, a little more transparent, but this one's actually great. For instance, it differentiates between the three fires of alchemy. And those three fires, we know now, of course, one uh, is the digestive fire. That is literally the heat coming off of manure, composted material, organic material as it decomposes. The process of decomposition and the, the turning into excrement was central to alchemy. And so one of the secret fires that they used was literally nothing more than basically a pile of manure within a, an enclosure. You would then put some sort of thing into it, even within a clay vessel or glass tube usually, uh, and this would transform potentially the materials there. Or you were attempting to remove vapor from stuff. Uh, they also would, foliated earth was uh, literally... Uh, if you overwater your plants too often, you'll notice a little bit of a white film on top. It's nitrates. It's basically, it's saltpeter. Uh, this would lead to the development of gunpowder as they poured urine through straw uh, or uh, into compost piles to make it grow crystals, actually, at the time. The second fire is the open flame, uh, literally just a, a fire. And the third is a kiln, an, an indirect heating, where you can get it very hot, but there's no actual flame. The three are all very important within alchemy because using the wrong fire at the wrong stage of the process destroys the entire process of creating uh, elixir of some sort or another or the philosopher's stone uh, as the case may be or something else simply observing processes and looking at them in a spiritual manner uh, through these transformative processes of course alchemy uh, regards the creation of material in the first place within nature as well that then can be perfected uh, through the skill of the artist as it's usually called or the philosopher of course um, some of these works this is one of them one of two works i believe that i've encountered that mentions a very very interesting proposal at the time which was that uh, materials within the earth uh, they mention lead and i believe uh, uh, antimony specifically here uh, but also gold and silver in, in various quantities and ways was created by nothing more than pockets within the earth through which vapors were moving uh, or stagnating and then various processes of seeping in of water, uh, expulsion, literally volcanism. And it's actually, it forms, if you look into it a little bit more deeply with these works, they're suggesting a process of, of the creation of material. Of course, elements aren't, aren't created in the same way, but the creation of various materials that's fundamentally similar to volcanism and plate tectonics. It's actually very, very similar to the expulsion of sulfur from the earth through, through basically vents, uh, sulfur vents and so forth uh, within uh, the context of volcanism. The expulsion of certain minerals dissolved within water. Uh, of course, uh, <laughs> various compounds that look like water, of course, are not water, like a nitric acid or hydrochloric acid. Well, the alchemists understood this. Of course, they thought it was just water that had been transformed in some way by some other thing within nature. They didn't realize the idea of, of the, uh, the chemical processes fully behind it, but
but it was still of interest to them. They understood that it acted differently from normal water. You know, you try to taste it, it wouldn't be a good time. So you use these symbols to mark it. Don't drink this. This is not actually water. This is our most sharp philosopher's water. Uh, <laughs> trust me. And do not slake your thirst with this uh, vessel. Not a good idea. Uh, do not lay thy hands upon this water. Else, elsewise thy flesh shall burn and return into the earth from whence it came. <laughs> sort of a very flowery. It's sort of like, uh, you know, that Disney movie uh, within, within Fantasia there. The one there, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, I think it was. Uh, it's very funny. It was sort of the, the spooky woo material there. Uh, minus maybe the uh, animated brooms, of course. Uh, but yes, it's an interesting work. Link again in the description to where you can obtain my edition of it off of Amazon. Uh, alchemy is of very great importance, I think, within a historical context, both of the occult, uh, the way it was looked at and practiced uh, in its earlier stages, both the occult and the history of science. Uh, again, covering basically primitive tectonics. Speaking of chemistry, they didn't fully understand everything about it, but they had a general idea, a notion of the capability of certain things being able to be replicated ad nauseum. Now, they were standardized. They didn't just say, well, you know, I wonder if I do this a hundred times, will I get a hundred different results? No, they understood you got the same result if it was properly carried out and that you could do interesting things uh, with various sulfur, salt, antimony, lead, all of these various wonderful things that they were playing around with and sometimes, of course, poisoning themselves. Uh, of course, the elixir that Hollandus was creating was basically lead-based. Essentially, uh, you take hot wine and dissolve this substance into it, it was basically little more than lead. Uh, in a transformative, uh, I believe, colloidal state, if I remember correctly. Very, very strange medicine. Uh, it would have been great for antimicrobial action in wounds, probably saved lives that way, but taking it as an elixir, uh, you know, several drops per day, it probably killed the person pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, if they didn't get better right quick, they could look forward to the alchemist knocking them off by giving them lead poisoning. That's about all. Peace out.